credit card culture has given rise to a life of consumerism. You go to a website, you go to a shop, if you like a gadget, splash your card, pay through easy EMIs. Is that good or bad? We'll discuss that in today's uh, program, Investors Hangout, which is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. With me is the CEO of Value Research, with, from whom I'm going to ask, paying through EMI, is that good or bad? Because earlier it used to be that you just go there, show, do some paperwork, and uh, you were entitled to borrow money from the bank or f wherever your credit card was from. But today it is very easy. You just simply enter your details and you are entitled to an EMI. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, the, the whole enablement of the credit culture, your ability mm -hmm. to borrow seamlessly is a very dangerous thing. Uh, in fact, it leads to impulsive spending. Uh, you just go there. You may not need it but you like something and you can spend it, spend that money right. even though you may not have that money. Uh, and it's very tempting. Ability to buy some, have something without having the money and uh, there's a cost to it. That is not greatly appreciated. There is a conversion aspect is the culprit, uh, I think. Every month only 2,000. Only 2,000. Right. You know, so it is uh. actually the decompounding of it. Mm. You know, when you get it in a denomination that only 1,800 rupees, only 2,000 Correct. rupees, you actually don't look at it objectively that what is the cost of it, whether it, first the utility of it, mm. how important it is, and then translating it into, you know, what is the worth of, you know, what is the worth of buying it now? Yeah. Uh, because buying it now will definitely have, you know, 15 to 20 percent of padding of interest at the least. Right. So, and, your, you know, the kind of documentation which we have and the whole ecosystem has got uh, built up. You know, today you have the credit syndicate, you know, the, 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 the a company which actually collates all the information of all that you have borrowed in the past and uh, is able to say that whether you are a good borrower or a bad borrower. And then there are other companies, you know, not necessarily the credit card companies, but uh, the companies which can evaluate that whether, whether you should be lent this much money, whether you have that income. And uh, you end up, you know, I think, you know, you need to borrow sometimes. There are two kinds of borrowing which is justified. Uh, one is when you buy a house. You will never have that capital and being little careful about how much to borrow and all that is the only concern. Okay. And the other is the emergency. Mm. Somebody lands in a hospital and you have your credit card by all means, you know, that is not the time mm. to think about uh, being, uh, you know, so that, that is not an impulsive spending. But worry about all the impulsive spending and plan for it because many a times, you know, we don't go with a plan and we just end up spending and spending future income. Because if you have the money and if you spend it is one aspect. Spending money which you will actually earn in future is actually unsaving. Uh, right. You know, uh, right. uh, your, what will be saved in future has been spent in spent now. So that that I think you know, if investors you know or savers or you know normal uh, citizens or wage earners, if they are conscious of it a little bit and decide between you know what is emergency and uh, what is not. And if it is planned for, I think, you know, you'll be able to save a lot of money and uh, you'll be able to s save a lot of wasteful spending. That I think is the critical aspect. And, you know, understanding the compounding of it, the money which you don't spend uh, and the worth of that money at a future date, when you mm. compound it at the rate of return that it will earn, that becomes su uh, substantial. So, you know, you, you need to really manipulate, you really need to think yourself hard about this manage manipulate your mind you know you because it's a man you know it's your own manipulation manipulate your uh, impulse uh, your impulse and uh, that i think you know uh, is the critical thing otherwise just understanding that these are the most expensive borrowings they come with a 18 to 20 percent cost and at the least and sometimes if you it's if it is on your credit card it can well be you know 24 to 30 percent which is possibly the most expensive borrowing anyone can have and no kind of investment will generate that kind of, you know, and these are guaranteed costs that you will have to bear. No investments can guarantee you that kind of high return on any investment. Okay. So, um, uh, please be careful of that impulsive uh, buying because it can lead to overborrowing. And of course, as Diren said, you end up paying interest of 24 to 30%. Then my next question is, why are the interest rates so high on these purchases? You mentioned 24% to 30%. Why? 
What's uh, the way out for us? You know, no, there isn't a way out around it. You know, okay. you just have to postpone your spending mm. till you have actually have that money, so that you can save on that interest. So you have to really see that whether it is a negotiable spending or not. You just have to defer it. I don't think there is a way around it. Why they are expensive? Because any lender, anybody lending you the money, mm. uh, the cost of borrowing, the cost of lending is entirely dependent on how likely he is to get that money back, right? And how quality, how uh, you know, what is the quality of the collateral? So, you know, when you when you when you are thinking of the spending, you know, if you are buying a phone on EMI or if you are buying a refrigerator or a washing machine on EMI. The likelihood of somebody getting that collateral back, it it will be substantially lower value than than, than you okay. paid for. Okay. It depreciates quickly. In fact, if you just you know drive out of your car, uh, drive out with a car from a car dealer, it actually depreciates by ten fifteen percent the moment you walk out. Mm. Uh, so the ability of a lender mm. to be able to you know having the quality of collateral, also, uh, the, the you know the track record of these people who are always in the borrowing mode. May not they may not be highest credit quality. They might have income, the likelihood. But the you know the likelihood of somebody defaulting on this without having an intention to default. If you lose your job and you have the income, uh, you will be a defaulter. So uh, that has to be factored in. And I think you know the likelihood of getting your money back for the lender drives that. So these are two factors why they are expensive, bad quality uh, borrowers. Are relatively poor quality borrowers with long history, mm. and the fact that you are borrowing for such a such a stuff, such a cons- consumption stuff itself is a pointer to that, and the low quality of the uh, of the collateral. But there's a new uh, phenomenon that has come in, which is called a uh, uh, no cost EMI. Yeah. So that's safe because they don't charge you interest. The uh, or is this a eye wash? Uh, it's not an eye wash, but mm. it's a neat packaging. Okay. It's a tempting packaging. Uh, there is no free lunch in this world, so huh. there can't be anything uh, which comes with free. Uh, you know, there is no free lunch. You have to really take it to your heart. Hmm. So this is basically a packaging of the discount which is enabled because uh, enabling easy credit allows for g- larger sales, and for larger sales, companies are willing okay. to give a discount hmm. to anybody who enables this. So there will be a lender who is making this credit available. And the product, say, you know, the dealer uh, will have, you know, will have access to a discount if it is being, le- you know, if it is catalyzed mm. by this lending. Right. And for that larger volume, they get compensated for that. So I may not have access to a discount of five percent, but I will have access to a discount of five percent if I actually borrow to uh, do that purchase. You will come across, you know, those kind of packages in terms right. of that. If mm. you have this credit card or that credit card, then you get ten percent cash back. It is of that nature. Of course, it comes with all kind of riders that to a maximum mm. of two thousand rupees, maximum of five thousand rupees. So that is one relief. That is a small thing, but you know, uh, and that is actually a huge catch. Uh, it tempts you to spend today, mm. then spend later, because you know, in your mind, you are thinking that it actually comes without a cost. Uh, but I think you cost is one aspect. But the whole spending is, you know, you have to ask at the in the first place that whether you need it. Uh, just because you know ten percent or you know no cost or zero cost or zero interest doesn't mean that you have impulsive to necessarily buy. Impulsive buying remains it's, impulsive. It's not coming for free. Mm, yeah. And the 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 cost, the, the worth of this capital or this money being spent today will be substantially higher. You know, if you think that it is not a very wise spending or a or uh, okay. or a wasteful wasteful spending. So, what is the way out? Should I stop buying? <clears throat> no, we we live to you know consume and spend as well, mm-hmm. and I think it's very much an important. But differentiate, uh, and I would suggest that if you are able to configure and postpone your consumption of the negotiable things, of course you can't negotiate mm-hmm. with the emergencies. You should not negotiate with your home purchase because you know, right. it will start saving you the rent. And you start enjoying your own house, the emotional comfort, and then you will also get some tax break. So it makes it, you know, very, uh, you know, it's a very easy decision. Uh, that apart, I think there are some borrowings which might be mandatory. You know, if your child gets into a college which is very expensive and you need to borrow, fine. Mm. Uh, but apart from that, all the spending which you can negotiate with, I think you know, just defer it for a little mm. while because all these borrowings that we are doing on credit card, they are not long-term borrowings. They are six months, one year, two year, two, one and a half, or eighteen months. Just defer it, and uh, 
start your investments with, with you know invest create a spending account that this is my money uh, you are going to pay this you know instead of buying it today which will be on a 18 month emi have it after 18 months accumulate your savings spend it after 18 months you would have earned something in between you will not have to incur the cost and this deferment mm. itself will you know divide you will completely change your approach to savings are you calling this fund something i am i would call it you know a expenditure fund uh, or a and, reverse and, emi or a fund. reverse emi <laughs> because you know instead of doing an emi mm. and incurring a cost having that money mm. and after the after you have this money then maybe if you get a great deal borrow again but at that point borrow it because now you have the money you are unlikely to be a defaulter your money will be earning something if that borrowing actually entitles you to some greater savings if something worth a lakh of rupees is available for 90000 rupees and otherwise if you pay otherwise you will have to pay a lakh of rupees today and you have that lakh of rupees in your account or in your investment you know this spending account mm. then by all means save 10000 rupees more defer it you know uh, and from that account that money can go uh, but incurring a interest for an impulsive purchase uh, if it can be deferred that's the oh, that's the simplest way of you know accumulating and becoming conscious of investing and accumulation okay so it has to be a short term debt fund that you're talking yes, about yes this is uh, you know this uh, expenditure account all the money should be invested in a short term debt fund or a ultra short term mm. debt fund the idea is not to really generate substantial return the idea is to generate some return and accumulate the savings so that you don't have to borrow Okay, so you have uh, uh, choose a fund and then do an SIP. Do an so, SIP. Uh, you know, it's like doing your EMI instead mm. of spending it, accumulating SIP. it, and mm. then mm. once that accumulation mm. is there, take that money out, buy okay. your thing, what you want to. Okay, uh, sounds a great idea. And a uh, simple they, idea, the simplest simple, idea. Yeah, I know. Uh, are there other benefits apart from saving on the interest cost? you become a better person <laughs> <laughs> you know you have your own money and then you spend it then actually you know uh, you de-risk yourself from saving 25 to um, 30% on the interest plus when you are investing in the short term debt fund you will earn interest on that also so yeah that apart you know as i said that you become a better person which means a whole shift from you know instant gratification to deferred gratification and never be a borrower okay. uh, uh, so, so that in itself you know is a mm. is a reflection of the discipline which you can exercise okay what about the profound benefits uh this i think is the you know more than the financial loss mm. i think this is the bigger benefit that you know you become a better person and you start you you become financially new literate you have greater understanding of the numeracy mm. and uh, you become conscious of the worth of money spent now and the worth of it at a future date so that i think you know it is a it's a trait which will uh, have a f far lasting effect than you know 5000 rupee 10000 rupee that will be incurred in your interest okay now, how about if we start teaching our kids about these things because as they go grow uh, grow up they would be they are the ones who would be getting into these impulsive purchases so why don't we become an example for uh, them yes that you know there is absolutely no teaching better than demonstrated example yeah, yeah. Uh, people you know if you give all kind of lectures mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. act differently uh, it has a different meaning uh, but it's a very hard thing because you know this age of uh, wide availability or you know easy credit all around you you know you you want to buy an iphone and there is a emi available it is it, it most of the ads do not even tell you that what is the cost of this product they tell you what is the cost of the what is the monthly outflow on account of emi uh -huh. uh, that becomes very easy you know something worth a lack of rupees or 70000 rupee and you are thinking in terms of 3000 rupees a month and you think it's fairly acceptable yeah, yeah. Uh, then so that in itself can be a huge can be a big learning that apart i think you know uh, but it's a very hard thing to do uh, the peer pressure mm. the surrounding so what i was telling you is that the profound benefit of all this that if you are able to do this once and you take pride in being a disciplined and a you know sincere person with your personal finances and uh, you are not ashamed of it hmm. of not having something which you should not have because you don't have the money uh, ha will have a big impact over time okay so 
consider reverse EMI fund or as the said, uh, expenditure fund, either of the two. Uh, whatever term it is, the fact of the matter is that you need to understand that you don't have to over borrow and you don't have to pay huge interest through these EMIs.